Well, hello everyone, it's great to be with you uh, this morning. Uh, just by way of introduction to ourselves, uh, we are Interactive Workshops. We work with organizations all over the world to provide learning and development. We have a base in London and New York, and we work with the likes of Cisco, Slack, Siemens, M&S, some of the brands you'll have heard of, uh, to give them learning experiences uh, that really make an impact and make a difference to their organizations. Um, very briefly, uh, to introduce us, I'm Chris. Uh, my background is in communications. Uh, I've worked for Interact Workshops for coming up to six years, believe it or not now. Um, and I joined to grow our in-house creative studio. So not only do we do learning and development, but we have an in-house creative studio doing graphic design, animation, film, all of that kind of stuff, the web development as well, which is really fun because we get to work with all different kinds of people and offer a lot to our clients. I also have a little daughter at home. Um, we're going to come on to uh, our topic of accountability a little bit later, uh, if I just flick uh, to there. Um, my daughter is now obsessed with chocolate. She's two years old, particularly for breakfast. She keeps asking for chocolate. And if I tell her she can have chocolate later, she's very good at keeping me accountable to that. Um, Millie, why don't you introduce yourself as well? Fantastic example. Thank you, Chris. Um, yes, hello. My name is Millie. Um, I'm also a producer at Interactive Workshops, which means that I'm basically responsible for producing stuff, um, such as the workshops and different digital assets that we provide to our clients to help their learning journeys. Um, my background is also in communications, so spent most of my career in marketing and PR found my way through to L&D, and I like to think that I've taken all those skills I learned communicating for clients to now apply them into the world of L&D as well. Um, I'm currently keeping myself very accountable because, disgustingly, I am running a marathon in less than three weeks. Um, the tears are forming, guys. Please do think... <laughs> How are you, certainly? Are you, are, you, are you feeling okay? Uh, changes day to day. Um, <laughs> But yes, I am running the Paris Marathon, so I had to keep myself very accountable to my training plan, running when I really, 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 really don't feel like it. Um, but got to stay accountable. Got to be accountable. Yeah. And that, that's the, the theme of our session uh, for the next half an hour or so, and we'll give some time for questions, is accountability. Uh, Emily asked us to uh, do a little slot for you uh, on this topic because she knows we use money.com. Uh, Enable helped us get set up on that platform. And uh, she wanted to know, how we use it, what we actually use it for. And uh, Millie, you actually decided that, do you know what, ultimately, it's accountability. Tell us a little bit, initially, about why that is the main thing for you. It's really interesting. When I was thinking about what we wanted the topic of this session to be, it's like, you know, is it how we call out slackers at work? Uh, not quite. Everyone works really hard. <laughs> Just going to put that out there. Is it, you know, how we annoy our clients by giving them loads of updates on monday.com? It's not quite that either. But I think when we are managing the learning programs that we do, and we'll look at one a little bit later, uh, when they're quite big, when there's a lot of different assets we have to create, it's actually how do we keep track of who is responsible for what and actually doing what they said they would do when they said they would do it. In short, how do we make sure they stay accountable? Fantastic, all right. Let's get into it. Um, so we've got a little question for you. So hopefully you've got a person next to you. Does anyone immediately not like the person next to you and want to swap places? <laughs> you can raise a hand now. <laughs> no, okay, no hands, that's perfect. You all broadly seem to like the person next to you. Have a little discussion with them. How do you keep people accountable? Okay, a few minutes, turn to that person next to you. Okay, if you want to bring that discussion to a close, finish that thought. We'd love to hear a few thoughts on how you keep people accountable. Millie's going to pop around with the mic. So Roaming mic, here I come. Stick a hand in the air if you've got something to share. There was lots of discussion there. How do you keep people accountable? At the back, yeah, thank you. Ensure and invest time in ensuring understanding what that person's accountable for at the beginning and then checking in frequently. Fantastic. So early check on understanding. Thank you very much. We had a hand down the front. Here I come. Millie's on the move. Outlining objectives and trying to reduce uh, the, the number of meetings because that helps a lot. Okay, yeah. So two things. Are objectives, outlining those. There may be many. And then reducing the, the number of meetings. Yeah. Proficiency. Thank you. This half of the room. We're coming to you next. Down the front. 
Uh, we went straight for targets and data. Right. Yeah. Having those clear. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. You're loud and clear. You're loud and clear. Yeah, so having that as your accountability check, what data are you going to come back to? How will you know whether you've, whether you've hit what you're trying to do? Fantastic. Let's have one more. Let's come over this in this direction. Is there a hand back here? Yes, perfect. Um, I'd say giving people autonomy and ownership um, over the work that they're doing. Um, I think that helps to drive responsibility and in the short term, people may mess up, but in the long term, they learn how to handle things themselves. Mm, yeah, I like that. So yeah, a bit more ownership, a bit more accountability might help motivate them. There might be mistakes. But actually, it might be the best way of getting what you want done. Fantastic. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, we're always thinking about this. We're always thinking about, in order to get our results, how do we keep people accountable? Um, you may be very familiar with this, uh, the pyramid that we've got on screen, Patrick Lencioni's uh, Dysfunctions of a team. Give me a little hand if you're, you've seen this before. Dysfunctions of a team. Maybe read the book. Yeah, a few hands. Um, if you're not familiar with this, uh, Patrick Lencioni uh, came up with these five dysfunctions that he sees teams have. Did a lot of research, studied a lot of teams, and came up with these five dysfunctions. Now, typically, what we do is we think a lot about results. We think a lot about uh, we, we have it in this kind of pyramid. This is how we typically work. We think a lot about results. How do we get results? What are the results? What are the results looking like? What are the projections? What are the forecasts? And then if that's not looking quite right, and we want to improve that, we start thinking, oh, maybe we're not quite accountable. And so we spend a little bit of time, but less time than we spend on the results thinking about accountability. And then maybe if the accountability is there or not quite there, we then think, well, have we got the commitment? And we tend to work up the pyramid that way, um, spending less time uh, and less effort at the top. But what Patrick Lencioni uh, addressed was that we have this bedrock of trust or an absence of trust. That's one of the dysfunctions. And if we don't work on trust, it's very hard to then have good conflict. Conflict without trust will be personal. Um, we won't be able to really trust the people that we're working with. We, when they say something, we won't trust that they mean it or that they'll do it. Uh, so the conflict will be messy, it'll be difficult. But if we trust the person, then actually we can have a positive conflict. We might disagree, Billy and I might thrash something out, and we might be able to work forward and say, actually, we've got a plan going forward. We disagreed, we've got a plan. We've worked through it because we trust each other. It's only then that we can actually get commitment because if we disagree, what I'm saying should happen or what Millie's saying should happen, if we disagree, we can't really get commitment because we believe different things or we think the future will uh, pan out in a different way. And only when we've got commitment can we really get accountability. Because I don't know if you've had it where you've given someone a project or you've discussed a project with someone, you maybe delegated a bit of work, and you come back in a week's time, and it's either not done, or it's not done properly, or there were meeting after meeting, but no actual work done, or the result isn't there, and you think, but we agreed it. We, we had this meeting on Monday. But when you reflect on it, you think, did they actually say they were going to do it? Did they say, yep, yeah, I will do this, and I will do this by then? Or did they say, OK? <laughs> Sometimes it's just like that. Someone says, OK. And what they had in their head was, I'll try and get it done, but I've got a lot of other things to do. It's probably not going to get done, probably next week. That's the level we've got to go to to get that accountability. Um, and only then, when we've got that accountability, do we see the results. So it's a flip of the typical way we approach these kind of things. So we've got another question for you. With that in mind, we want to hear this time Actually, in what situations do you find it difficult to get people to be accountable? As Chris just spoke to, is it when you delegate a task, you think you've done that really well, but actually that person doesn't complete it? Or is there another situation where you find it difficult to lock in that accountability that you want? Again, chat to your new friend next to you. We all got along last time, which is fantastic. Chat to the person next to you for a couple of minutes, and then we'll send out another roaming mic to hear your thoughts. Off you go. All right, everyone. Sorry to bring those conversations to an abrupt halt. 
But we would love to hear some of your thoughts. Chris, this time, is going to run around with our roaming mic. Uh, so, who is willing to share? Oh, yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say that um, when there's quite a lot of people involved um, in that accountability and a decision needs to be made, especially if the instructions are made verbally, um, that can be hard uh, to keep people accountable because um, if it's a large group, someone might say, oh, I thought it was another person's responsibility, especially if it, the instructions have not been written down. So I find it easier to, even if instructions are given verbally, to make sure there's kind of like a, a written uh, list of things that need to be done and, and who needs to, 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 like, who's assigned to those different tasks. Yeah, definitely, thank you. Especially when there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of people on that project team. Yeah, you've definitely got to make a record and track some of those responsibilities. Um, we were thinking as well about Yeah, definitely. Deadlines change, different priorities come up. How do you keep track of what needs to be done for each project uh, and, yeah, mitigate against actually missing some of those deadlines? We'll hear from one more person, perhaps. Hi. We were discussing about when mistakes are made. Um, and mistakes are made, uh, yeah. and if, if you create a culture of learning and a, creature, a, a culture where mistakes happen, because they do happen, but how do you learn from them, how do you grow and develop from them, then you, you've got, then that's when the challenge is. If you don't have those things, those dysfunctions, then mistakes, everybody wants to attribute to other people. Definitely, and I think that's where, to Chris's point earlier, if you have that trust, Actually, it's okay if somebody makes a mistake because you can trust that either they'll learn from it or they'll figure out a way with the team to actually get past that blocker as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, for sharing. Um, so what we're going to look at is similarly how we overcame some of these issues, particularly on big projects. Um, it might be that you're here today looking for a CRM actually to help you stay more accountable, whether that is to hitting sales targets that we discussed earlier or to keep track of those projects that we were talking about. And this is where Chris and I wanted to share a little bit of a use case of how we use Monday.com to do exactly that, to stay accountable, particularly when there are a lot of moving parts in those big projects. And we've got the perfect use case, Millie, because you were part of running a huge <laughs> program. Uh, yeah. can, we, can we mention the client name? It's a huge tech. I think so, yeah. Cisco. 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 Um, and uh, th this project was huge. There were a huge number of assets. You can see some of the, the stats of it on the screen. What did you have to do? So this was probably the biggest project we've ever completed at IW. Um, so it is, or it was, the redesign of Cisco, Cisco's global graduate sales program. Um, so it's a year-long program. They hire in hundreds and hundreds of grads each year. Um, and what they were trying to do, traditionally this program had been for six months eight hours a day of kind of lecture-based workshop learning. Um, so they would just bring all their grads into different rooms, depending on what country they were in, and basically just talk at them for eight hours a day. Um, and because it's Cisco, it was very tech heavy. And probably before we came along, a little bit dry, I want to say. Um, there's not too much fun you can have with identifying the components of a network, for example. Um, but we did our best. So we were brought in to basically find a way to change that program to be a bit more hybrid. So still keep some workshop elements, but make them really interactive, which luckily our company name is Interactive Workshop, so we're usually pretty good at that. Um, but also to create some outstanding digital assets as well, so that the grads could have that time kind of by themselves, doing some individual learning, but then come together in their workshops and practice some of the skills that they've picked up in the e-learning. Um, so you'll see some of the stats on the board there. Over 400 assets. Keeping track of 400 assets is very hard. We'll show you how we did that in a second. Um, we had a very short time frame as well in which to build it in. We had only four months to build it, and we had to produce six months' worth of content. So already, if you're doing the math, it doesn't quite add up there. <laughs> uh, and we had the challenge of a time difference as well, with our main stakeholders being in the US and us being based here in London in the UK. So it was huge, a lot to do, limited time frame, mm -hmm. not really enough to do it. Mm -hmm. But being interactive workshops, we back ourselves to do something interactive. What was most challenging about it then for you? Um, I think it was a couple of things. I think 
first of all, actually keeping track of everything, just because it was such a big project, there were so many different things we had to do, um, actually keeping track was one challenge in itself. Um, I think the time difference as well was a little bit of a challenge, uh, but what we actually managed to do was use monday.com to mitigate some of that. Um, so it actually turned into a benefit in a way. So what often would happen is that we would ship assets, for example, that needed review to Cisco at the end of our day. They would review everything, come back while we're in bed overnight, um, and they would actually leave comments um, in the Monday board that we created and shared with them so that we could wake up and say, okay, great, they've reviewed this one, they've got some feedback, or they haven't reviewed this asset yet. Um, but the main challenge was, of course, the accountability side of things. Um, less so for our team, probably, um, but we had some challenges actually working with Cisco um, because we needed access to a lot of technical information, for example, a lot of subject matter experts, um, and Cisco would say, yeah, 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 we'll get you all that info, um, and then sometimes didn't. So we managed to use monday.com actually as a relationship manager in the sense of, hey, you guys said you'd get this done by this deadline. Can we just check in here, see if we're still on track? Can you put us in touch with this person because you haven't yet? And actually, it really built that trust for us to have those open conversations because, you know, no one's not doing anything out of malice. It's just I need that reminder of, oh, I forgot I said I'd do that last week. I'm sorry, I'll do it right now. Yeah, yeah. so we've used Monday for, for years for project management, but I think what you're describing is using it beyond just a, a, a checklist, yeah. to do list. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the board used, how that works? I cannot emphasize enough, this is not even the whole board. <laughs> <laughs> it was absolutely huge. Um, and what you also can't see on this board is the sub items, every line item that you can see there had about 20 sub items underneath it as well. Um, so managing the board became pretty much a full-time job in itself as well. But it was really, really useful to have everything laid out exactly like that. And I think the thing that was really important for our client as well was they wanted really granular detail instantly. So they wanted to be able to check in at any moment and see exactly where we were with the project, where certain assets were um, up to. You can do that with a Monday board, which is really helpful. Um, looking at it now is so satisfying. All of that green. All of the so green done boxes, done. yeah. My goodness. Can you imagine when we were in the depth of it and how much red and orange there was <laughs> on the board? Now I'm like, oh, my goodness. But that's part of the accountability <laughs> piece, I guess, is that you're seeing the, the traffic lights and you are just got it right there. The client can see it as well. It's all up to date. Yep. Exactly. And I think speaking to a, a point that the gentleman at the back made earlier about um, motivation as mm. well. Um, for me personally, um, I do love a checklist, but also when you can actually see all of those milestones getting checked off, you can see those things getting done as everything slowly started to turn green. Um, that really motivates you even in the tough times to actually get to that finish line, to keep making sure all those boxes hit green, to get everything done on time. And I think a, a core part of accountability as well is that motivation. And, and what changed? What did you see in the team, in your relationship with the client using this method of accountability? Um, I think it was really effective. It was great to have this as an extra communication channel as well. Um, and I think similarly, it was such a mammoth task. That at the beginning, everyone was a bit like, oh, can we actually pull this off in four months? Um, and actually, as we started to, as we started to see those green boxes appear, it gave us that trust with each other that we could get it done, um, gave us that excitement of like, oh my gosh, we're actually doing it, we're getting it done. Um, so that was really rewarding as well. And you've used uh, dashboards as well on Monday. Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you, how you use those? Yeah, definitely. So Chris mentioned earlier, we've got an in-house studio. So it's um, our superpower, in my opinion. It's a team of graphic designers, illustrators, animators, um, camera crew as well. Um, and they are very, very busy. And particularly when we, we were um, building some of those assets for Cisco, there were a lot of videos, a lot of e-learnings that our studio team really had to be on top of. Um, so just to give you an example of a dashboard, this is the one that our studio uses. You might be able to see it's a little bit small, but it basically tops up the number of hours of work they've got left to do 
each week and how many hours of work they've done already, the number of assets they've successfully shipped in that week. And again, I think the bar at the top when I speak to many of the studio is their kind of favorite feature of this dashboard because they can actually see that bar throughout the week getting greener and greener. They know the sweet release of the weekend is not far away. <laughs> nice full green battery at the end of the week. Yeah, yeah exactly. Nice um, fantastic. Um, we're going to leave some time uh, for questions uh, in a moment. Um, but yeah, that's uh, broadly it from us. Anything else you wanted to share, Millie? I just wanted to see, Chris, have you got any examples of how you've yeah. used Monday? Do you know what? I did have one example, which was the Kanban view on Monday. I love using that with my team. So I will put all our actions in there for the week, set it up on the Kanban view. So if you're not familiar, it just kind of records them in columns. Everything you've got to do, you move it across to what you're working on. You can move it across to any number of columns. You might have a review column, which I find helpful as a manager. Yeah not being the bottleneck, <laughs> just working through that review column, checking everything off, moving things to done, and uh, Monday is a great way of completing, moving to done, flagging it green. I, li I like to use that as well for accountability. It's a good thing to check in on, not just setting up everything you have to do on a Monday, but coming back to that on a Friday and saying, how did we do? We can celebrate some of the success as well.